the project I'm going to show you is how to put together the Caboodle car carrier that we did using Papa's old truck. And I'm not going to show you every single step, um, but I'm just going to kind of do a run through of some of the things that might be a little bit more difficult. And I don't know about you, but I'm a visual person and I like to see some of this. And I know for a lot of you, we've heard the same thing. And so what we want to do is to kind of show you a few of the steps of what we do in this project. Um, your little ones are going to love these. Um, just think about going out to a restaurant some night, you know, doing something fun where you just want to take a, a little, little something along. Great activity piece for your little ones. We've got two different sizes. You can do them with or without the appliques. So I'm going to open this up. This one is, is a real simple one. It's, it's much smaller. And what it has are the two roads. We've got two roads right here. And then we refer to these as the garage stalls. As you can see, this is where the little matchbox size cars go into. And then this is the flap that holds the, um, the cars in place. So you can see we've got these all put in here. It closes up very nicely. We make these out of fusible foam and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And then this one is version number two and it's just a little bit bigger. So it's got a little bit more to it. It opens up the same. It's got the garage stalls with the little flap that goes over, but this one's got just a little bit bigger play area. So um, you can get the cars out and run them down and around. Sure to have a lot of fun. So the first thing we're gonna do to get our car carrier ready to go is we're going to put on the appliques that you wanna put on uh, with the road, the little road that they can run their cars on. And then if you choose to put uh, one of the little truck or, or appliques on it, then you're gonna wanna do that on this step um, before you adhere the three pieces together, the, the two pieces, the two base pieces and the foam piece. So just for purposes today, I want you to see that I have, our, our road is already cut out and it's already adhered on. I've, um, I've adhered it on with a fusible bonding. And so, you know, your pattern's gonna tell you exactly where to put this. Uh, you can see this is on a, just a single piece of fabric. And then on the other base piece, I've got a little school bus adhered onto it, ready to applique. And so, like I said, we wanna get those applique pieces on there before you adhere these to your foam, um, because uh, we don't wanna stitch through all three thicknesses this time um, when, you're, when you're putting these on. Now, when you're stitching through one thickness of fabric, you're gonna wanna use a stabilizer. And you might ask, why do I need a stabilizer? And the stabilizer stabilizes your stitches. So if you've ever stitched something and it looks like this, like you get a real wavy uh, effect, it's because you needed something on the backside to stabilize those stitches so it had something to kind of hold them. Now, I like to use, it's a perforated uh, stabilizer and you can see it, it's got tons and tons of tiny little holes. I also wanna show you that it's super pliable. It's very soft, so it's not gonna stiffen it. Now, in a project like this, you could use a, a sturdier one, but this is my go-to stabilizer. I love it because when you're making projects and you don't want them to be stiff, this is what to use. And so what you're gonna do is cut a piece a little larger than your applique. And we're just gonna, I'm gonna lay this right on. You're gonna see, we're gonna put this underneath the fabric. And then what I would do would be just to take your pins and lightly pin it just around the outside edge. Then you're gonna stitch through both layers. When you get your stitching done, you're gonna uh, tear away, that's why it's called a tear away. You're gonna tear away the pieces just on the outside of your stitching. So we would do this one and then we would also do the same thing underneath on the back side of your school bus and I would pin that on there. Then I would stitch through and tear that all excess away. Now, for purposes today, I'm not gonna stitch this, but I'm gonna show you um, then the next thing we would do in the pattern, uh, once we get it all um, appliqued and the excess tear away 
um, pulled off. Then we're going to take our three pieces. We're gonna take both base pieces and we're gonna pretend for purposes today that we have these appliqued. We're gonna lay the first base piece down uh, wrong side up. We're gonna take our fusible foam this is a great product. It really makes some fun, easy uh, projects. It's great in different kinds of bags and tote bags. Um, we use them for some of our little uh, mug rugs. But you're going to sandwich these three pieces together. Now, like I said, typically our applique would be on here, but today I'm just gonna show you how to put these three layers together. Now, um, one thing that I like to do is I like to start from the middle and go out. Just kind of the way, same, same thing with like when I quilt something, I start in the center and I go out because it smooths everything then out to your outside. I have um, uh, my iron already set. I do have it on steam. Now, when you buy this, you're gonna wanna follow the, um, the manufacturer's instructions on how to put this together. But I've got my iron ready to go. I'm gonna use a little bit of steam and I'm simply going to iron these three pieces together. Now, when I instruct you uh, to do this in your pattern, typically what I do is I make these pieces just a little bit bigger um, so that when we get done, we're gonna trim them to the size that we need and then they're, they're gonna be perfectly together. Now I'm gonna iron on this side. Now let's say, okay, I've got a little uh, wrinkle right here and I don't like that, I don't want that to be in there. Just pull it off. You can pull this off and re-iron that. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out so we're gonna get all these pieces ironed together. And then of course, then when we, got, when we get done with this, then I would instruct you to cut it to the size, the finished size that we're gonna need. Got another little ripple, so I'm gonna just pull that off. There we go. So this just kind of shows you how easy it is to sew your base pieces onto the, the two-sided foam. Um, I will tell you that we have this um, available on our website. We also have the single-sided, which we use for some other projects, but for this particular one, I used the double-sided, and it's a great product to have. I've already pre-cut the piece that I need for my little pleated garage stalls, and um, this is just, it's, a, it's an eight, eight inch piece of fabric that I've already ironed in half, wrong side, or yeah, wrong sides together. And what I instruct then is take this to your uh, cutting mat, and I've got the cutting mat here. And on both sides, I want you to mark, um, and all of these measurements are given. And so this is, this is the easiest way that I knew how to show you how to do these uh, little pleated pockets. And so basically, I take a water-soluble quilter's pen, or if you're using dark fabric, just a, a white chalk pencil, and you're gonna start making a mark at the one and a half inch mark, and then at the two inch mark. And then basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna create six of these pockets. And you're just gonna go along and you're going to put these markings onto this piece of fabric. They're gonna, we're gonna skip two inches and then we're gonna mark each one, we're gonna mark at an inch across the, to the two inches. So I've marked two inches and then one inch and one inch. Now I go to two inches again and one inch and one inch. Each two inch little spot designates the, um, car garage, and then these are the places that we're gonna pleat it. All right, I'm at the ironing center now, and I'm gonna show you how it's really simple to put these pleats, these little garage uh, stalls, into this piece of fabric. Um, I'm gonna start at my at my second mark right here, which this is my gonna be my first garage stall. And I instruct that you have the fold of the fabric to the right, 
And then we are gonna, each pleat is gonna go the opposite direction. So the first one that we're gonna do is gonna come towards me. So I am gonna take this little pleated area that I have marked and I am going to press that into the fabric. This is essentially what we're doing is we're making this little pleated uh, pocket set. And then what I do is I just take a pin and I stick it into my ironing surface. If you have a, a wool mat or something, this is great. You can do um, on that as well. Um, then the second one, so this, this pleat has come towards me, okay? The next pleat is gonna go away from me. So I'm gonna take this line and I'm just gonna slightly pull it and I'm gonna take it to my next little line and I'm gonna press it into here. I'm gonna press it into the fabric and I'm gonna take my pins and I'm going to pin these in place. And I'm gonna to continue to do this until I get all six of these garage stalls ironed into the fabric. This one's gonna go away. got my pleats all made now and you can see how nice these look. Once you get them all put in, then what you want to do is remove the pins off of the folded edge side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these pins and we're going to put a pin into each pleat. Um, eventually what you're going to do is take this to your your sewing machine and you're going to machine base these. I instruct you to machine base them an eighth of an inch away from your raw edge and that just secures them down until you get your little casing put on. Now this one we have already taken off and then uh, the next step you're going to do is you're going to take one of your one and a half inch strips and you're going to center it on this piece and you're going to stitch this down. And this is what then encases your entire raw edge. So that's just a real simple step. The next thing we do is our little flap that goes over the top of the garage stalls that keeps those um, in place so that they don't run out of their stalls. I've already got the end stitched a quarter of an inch. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn that out to the right side I'm gonna grab my scissors here. I always do just kind of a gentle poke. Um, I trimmed my corners already, but do a gentle poke to kind of get your seams out there nice and straight. And then um, I press this piece to give it a nice crisp edge. Something that I grew up doing is, boy, you pressed at every step. My grandmother was a professional seamstress and she was pretty clear on that, that's for sure. Now I've got this, this pocket done, or this little flap, and now what I'm gonna do is insert, I already have this pre-cut, I'm gonna insert this piece of foam inside of the flap take it all the way into the fold. Now, it's gonna be just a little bit larger just because when you when you fold it, it kind of loses a little bit of its, its size. But once we get that done, I instruct that you just trim that excess off. And what you're gonna do is you are going to iron your fabric onto the foam, just like we did with that first step with the base pieces. And then what I instruct is to, um, you're gonna do uh, a top stitch along 
your finished edges on both side and down around and, and up the other side. You're gonna cut this excess off and then you're gonna take one of those one and a half by 15 inch strips again and you're gonna put that, you're gonna center it and you're gonna put that on that flap. Now the reason that this is bigger is we have to keep this in a little bit so that when we um, stitch this on and then we stitch the binding on that we don't catch the binding into the flap. So that's why this is a little bit narrower than this strip. But I tell you to center that so then you, when you put it on, you'll center that over the top of those garage stalls. Before I um, bring out the finished uh, car carrier and kind of show you exactly, you know, where the different pieces are at, one of the other things that I do uh, to create the straps and, and the little closure um, tabs is I instruct that you take um, a, a, your strip of fabric and with wrong sides together, we're going to um, iron this the full length of this strap, this piece of fabric. This just ensures that you have a completely encased um, strap and no raw edges. So we're gonna open it up and then you're gonna take the raw edge into your fold. And you're gonna wanna do that on both sides. Now I open that up again and I bring the other raw edge into the fold. And I'm just gonna show you on a portion of this because it's all going to be the same. Then when we get both of those sides done, fold it up and then press it down nicely. And see what it does is it just makes a really nice little enclosed, no raw edges. And then what I do is I instruct you to uh, top stitch right next to your um, edge on both sides and then a quarter inch again. And that gives you just a real nice um, little strap that's gonna go on the top. So here's the strap that I put on the top of this car carrier. And these are the little tabs then that get sewn into your binding with the Velcro that show you the, the closure. Now we're gonna open this up and I'm just gonna show you um, like I say, we're not gonna we're not gonna go through step by step to do all of these because we just kind of wanted to show you a little bit as far as the different um, steps in this uh, project. Um, but you can see that we have put on the road. There's four different pieces that we put the road on, um, and that all is done with the fusible and then stitched. Um, our little garages, our garage stalls, go right above the. Um, this perpendicular uh, road piece, and then the flap over the top of that, and then it's all bound. Now, I do uh, a couple of different kinds of binding. You can um, bind it to the top side, put your binding onto the top side, and then turn it to the back and hand stitch it. Or in this case, because I know there's gonna be lots of activity on this, I stitch it on the back side, and it gets a it's a little bit off here. I try to keep it as close to um, the line as I can. But then on the front side, then I do a buttonhole stitch. And so if you bring this over, just so it covers your stitching line, then you won't get too much of this where it goes off the, um, the binding. It doesn't really matter, but that's just how you do that. You're gonna bring your binding over just to cover the stitching line, and then um, you're gonna do a blanket or buttonhole stitch over the top. And then when you get it all done, then you, you're gonna sew in these cross lines, and what that does is it creates the fold so that when you get ready to fold this all up, you just basically roll it all up, roll it up over your car garage stalls, and close it up. And then we're gonna we're gonna close up those little Velcro tabs, and away you go. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little tutorial on this Caboodle car carrier. Um, of course, you can get the pattern, um, you can get the fabric. It's all Henry Glass fabrics. It's um, Papa's old truck is the name of the collection. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. And until next time, happy sewing.